Welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast, a production from Empowering Pumps and Equipment as the voice of the pump and related equipment industry. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Empowering Industry Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Matthews, and I am excited about this interview, uh, excited about summer. I'm uh, really looking forward to all the things that we have as far as learning, uh, as far as getting together. And um, uh, without further delay, Jean, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce yourself and kind of tell everybody you know, who you are and what you do. All right. Um, thank you. And uh, I am Jean Vogel. Uh, uh, name is Eugene. I go by Jean mostly. And uh, I am the uh, pump and vibration specialist for ESA. Um, ESA is Electromechanical Authority, and we are a uh, uh, not-for-profit organization uh, supported by our members. Our members are all um, service centers um, who do repair on various types of industrial machinery, uh, from small little uh, intricate mechanisms uh, uh, that you could hold in your hand to machines that are as big as a house. So um, we have a broad uh, a range of equipment that we, that we uh, uh, bring into our service centers. ESA provides support centers for them, uh, uh, is a support center for them. We provide services in a broad array of, uh, of uh, areas. Um, I'm technical, so in fact, I'm the mechanical side. We have uh, four others who, who concentrate mostly on the electrical side. Um, but we supply, uh, provide um, uh, support and training in uh, how to run a business, uh, how to keep books, uh, sales, and how to how to be successful, how to be innovative. Um, just all of the things that a uh, a small privately had held company, whether it's a matter of uh, three employees or three hundred employees, and we have the full breadth of that. Um, uh, the things that they need to know, we support them in that. So. My uh, my area in that is pumps and vibration, and um, those are two. Uh, uh, there's a, there's a crossover between them. I'll explain a little bit how I ended up in that. Um, I, I my my background is 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 very uh, broad. Um, I started as a mechanic, uh, working in a service center repairing machinery. Um, actually, I started in the service center when I was in high school, um, sweeping floors after school. Uh, graduated high school and they they gave me a promotion. They let me steam clean, which is a dirty, nasty job, but uh, something that when you're uh, you know 17, 18 years old, well, you know that's what you do. So um, I seem to have a knack for uh, mechanical things. Um, it's odd that I would end up working in a in a repair shop that repairs uh, rotating machinery. Um, well, actually, it's not odd. It's it seems almost uh, predestined. I recall, and I, I tell this story when I'm uh, in my training classes sometimes, um, I was about seven years old and my, my dad uh, took me with him to the junkyard to get parts. All our parts for repairing the cars were used. We didn't have any money. And um, I said, Dad, I want a motor. All these motors and things sitting around. He said, what are you going to do with the motors? I want to work on it. Dad worked on one. I wanted to work on one. So he got the guy at the junkyard to give him a generator. That's when cars had generators before they had alternators. Um, that was my favorite toy. He gave me some tools. I'd take it all apart, take little brushes out, take little spacers apart, put it all back together, make sure it worked. And uh, um, I ended up working in a repair facility where we repair pretty much the same type of machinery on a much larger scale and more sophisticated scale. Um, so the, that's how I got started as, as a mechanic. I got involved with balancing in the service center, running a balancing machine, balancing rotors. Eventually went to work for a company called IRD Mechanalysis. They don't exist anymore. Um, when I was involved with them, they they had about 90% of the market as far as uh, um, the practical application of vibration and for balancing and, and machinery analysis. Um, I did it for the service center. Apparently got to be pretty good at it. Uh, the company uh, who made the instrumentation I was using, IRD Mechanalysis, hired me as a district manager, moved to Omaha, um, and the rest is history. I've been doing vibration analysis and balancing um, for uh, most of my professional career. Um, I've worked for a number of different uh, companies that uh, uh, manufacture e equipment for doing vibration analysis, uh, four or five of them as they've evolved. 
IRD Mech Analysis was bought by another company and they've been bought by another company. And all of the companies I've worked for have been bought by someone. At, um, uh, at one point, I decided I would do better on my own. I started my company, uh, GME, General Maintenance Equipment Engineering. And um, it was successful for, uh, uh, for, you know, for close to two decades. Uh, uh, put my kids through, through school and uh, uh, did okay. A lot of traveling, a lot of traveling involved sales, uh, involved teaching a lot of training classes. Um, and when the occasion presented itself, um, going out and, and doing the service work, you know, hands on. So um, anybody who's ever started up their business probably knows you only ask two questions. Um, does it pay? And is it legal? <laughs> and uh, if the answer to the first question is real good, you kind of fudge on the second one. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, I, as long as I've known Isa, I've known you um, as part of that. And I think that kind of that next part of your journey, I see parts of that in what you were just telling us about what Isa is and how you're helping those business owners from, you know, from the ground up, basically giving them the tools that they need. But yeah, sales is definitely part of it. And you, it takes yeah. getting out there in front of the customer, right? That's correct. The, the, the sales, I don't, I'm not involved in that, even though I have a very strong background in sales. Um, uh, but, the, but the sales side of what ESA provides to our members is, is very important. Um, um, I've been in a lot of different service centers that did, you know, specialized in different areas of equipment, certainly pumps and other types of mechanical and electrical equipment uh, over my career. And you always knew when you walked into an ESA service center that you better have your business hat on um, because they knew business. They understood what it took to make money. They understood what it was to innovate. Um, and if you could show them the how the bottom line was going to be improved with what you had, um, they were all for it. Uh, that was not true of others who were uh, other service centers who were more uh, experts in what they did, but the business side of it tend to lag. So yes, that's a very strong part of what ESA provides to uh, to its members. I, I'm not involved in that. I'm strictly, strictly technical. Um, and uh, most of what I do is uh, for ESA is training. Um, I've, I've uh, written a number of different training classes related to vibration analysis and, of course, uh, related to pumps. I'm also the pump specialist. Working in a service center, I repaired a lot of pumps. I learned pumps from the inside out. And then when I got into the the vibration analysis as a as a service contractor, people would hire me to come in and figure figure out why does this machine make this noise or vibrate this way or fail. Um, a lot of those machines were pumps, so you had to understand the operating characteristics of the pump um, from the operational side. So I've seen it from inside and out, and uh, that's been a big uh, help to me in helping our members because they're faced with the same situations. Um, whether they have a pump which isn't operating right or isn't holding up correctly, or if a customer comes to them and says, hey, we got this application, we want to buy a pump, um, what do we need to buy? Um, I provide the, the support on that, and I teach training classes to explain to them so they understand and know how to make those decisions. Um, I wrote a, a basic vibration analysis class for our members. It's a uh, it started off as a series of uh, webinars. There were twelve of them, part over six week period, um, two hours a week, and uh, that we recorded those. And I wrote a booklet to go with it. So our members have access to that introductory vibration analysis training on an ongoing basis. Um, it's been a pretty successful program getting our folks up and going on uh, vibration analysis. The, the the biggest challenge I think our members face is getting new employees onboarded and up to speed uh, and finding the, the employees who have the qualities that they're looking for and then getting them the training they need. And ESA provides, ESA provides that training. And I, I think what I do as far as pumps and vibration analysis is an important part of that. Absolutely. Are you aware and and of I the... know that that's a big topic, you know, just how do we train the the new employees that we have? Um, and so you have that resource all ready for them. So they just need to come and be a member of ESA to get access to that, right? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And um, 
Um, you, you may be aware that we've just, uh, ESA has just launched a uh, uh, online training service, uh, uh, Learning Resource Center, um, that uh, provides a, a, a broad array of from from basic to advanced training for our for our members and gives them the ability to track their progress for individual employees as they go through it. It's uh, it's quite a fascinating uh, offering. A big effort that we put into that just launched this year, uh, the end of last year. Yeah, and that accountability piece is so important too, so that you can be able to see did they get through the training, how did they do, you know, where what what um, session are they on so that you can feel like, okay, now we can go to the next step. Um, I think that that's really a great tool for, for a manufacturer, for one. I, when you were talking, I was thinking about um, how the industry has changed, right? You're talking about how this company's been bought so many times, right? And then, you know, also see the the trend of manufacturers offering the service. And so some of, some you've got your service centers, but then you also have, manufacturers who have service centers how has that played into the training aspect um the the ability of, of our members to perform at a level that manufacturers appreciate mm -hmm. uh is is largely a result of the training that ESA provides and and they understand that these folks our members they are competitors but they recognize the unified benefit of having an ESA organization to support all of them. I mean, it, you know, rising tide floats all boats and uh, anything good said about one ESA member transfers over to the other ESA members. So there was a time in history way, way back, and you know, 1940s, 1950s, uh, earlier than that perhaps, where it was difficult to get information, uh, particularly from electric motor manufacturers, which is such a core part of our, our business. Um, and yes, they saw us as, as competitors. Um, they wanted their service centers, you know, to do their work, but um, uh, that evolved. And uh, today the, the manufacturers recognize the importance that ESA plays in meeting customers' needs at a, at a, a, a personal level that a large manufacturer often can't provide. Um, we have such a broad breadth. Uh, if they're interested in an electric motor to run a pump or to run a gear gearbox or to run a clutch or something, um, we understand both sides of that and we can address issues on both sides of that on large and small scale um, that a manufacturer, you know, they've got their product and if it doesn't fit that niche, then they're kind of like throw up their hands and say, what do we do now? I guess we walk away where, an ESA service center can work with the uh, that customer, their customer, our member work with their customer uh, to tailor whatever it is that they need. And that involves the same products that those manufacturers are selling. And when there's issues with the service, we have the expertise to take care of that. So we've got a real cooperative um, uh, relationship with uh, machinery manufacturers that has developed over the years um, because of the expertise, which is largely provided by ESA. Yeah. Members. And that's, that is part of it. And I've seen it, uh, I've definitely seen it grow over the years. I've been in this 20 years now. And so, uh, but just, just a wealth of information and knowledge and great players and thought leaders in the industry space, just learning um, how to be a better trainer. Like, um, you know, Gene, I know you've trained a trainer, I'm sure many times. Um, and so oh. there's so much there and you feel that, um, in the environment of coming to ESA. I've always enjoyed that event and felt you feel like you're coming home almost and um, you know, getting to to have access to the knowledge that is out there. And so I'm not technical, but I appreciate all of it that you have created from everyone. And like I said, uh, when I think about uh, pump trainer, you know, in this space, I think of you, I always have, and um, I'm just, you know, I'm just eating up all this information that you're giving me, Jean. Um, well, but I think we'll have, part of, yeah. we'll have to bring you in and put you on a bench and give you some tools and we'll put you to work. There you I, go. I know I know I've got three or four, three or four members out there would just love to have you come by and 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 do some work for them. Yes, yes. And I do enjoy that. I love the hands-on. Um I remember being at one of my first events and, you know, you took apart the pump a little bit, not, you know, maybe took the seal off or something. And um, it, it was just a rewarding. And so even if it's not your job, 
you can learn from it. You can appreciate the work that's gone into this. And it does, it helps me tell the story, helps me understand what's needed, uh, helps me understand the job that's out there that right. you know, we're talking about. So thank you for that invite. I appreciate that. Um, and I do, I absolutely love a, uh, a tour. Um, one other thing on motors, just being the, the size there's, like you said, so small and intricate, uh, to, I can fit inside the Seder, you know, it's just such a, yeah. a vast, yeah. a vast, um, industry. And so I, I do think it would be difficult for one individual company or person, you know, to have all that knowledge, right. You, you, that collectiveness of ESA. That, that is correct. Um, uh, we each have our own little areas of specialty, um, and that uh, that does well for our members. Uh, um, yes, absolutely. Excellent. Well, Gene, I know we're, um, we're coming up. We're going to have an event in Vegas this year um, in Great. June. Yep. And so um, I'll definitely link to that so everybody can check it out and see if they can attend. Um, anything else that you want to leave our listeners with? Um. um if you have the opportunity to come to Las Vegas, to the ESA convention, by all means, it, it, it is well worth the trip. Um, um, the entertainment and, and fun that's be, had, to be had out there aside, uh, the technical sessions, uh, just the information that can be wrought from being at the exhibition and talking with the vendors who have the products and uh, auxiliary services, you know, that are available is is, is a tremendous uh, uh, a tremendous resource uh, that would be helpful for anyone who's loosely associated with the uh, uh, with the industry. In addition to our members, we also direct members. We have uh, uh, associate members who are, of course, many of the vendors who who deal with us. So um, um, if, if if someone is out there and thinking that well, you know, East is for for folks who do repair work, and we're we're in a, on the sales and supply side. Um, check it out. There may be something there that you find is a big benefit for you. Absolutely. It made me want to go and look through and see what I can, as a business owner, can pull from that as well. Um, Gene, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you. I plan on being there. And, um, you know, until we meet again uh, or until next time, like I like to say here, be empowering. <laughs>